Hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Maggie. And Obi. Hello, everyone. I love, I just jumped off of someone else's live. Um, Seba was on. It was great. I, I just went to everybody's live real quick <laughs> just to support all the doulas and the healers that are celebrating this week. Kiss those babies for me, love. Okay. Hi, Freya. Okay, let me see. Let me invite Winter. You guys are going to love Winter. You're going to love her. So let's get her in here. All right, my love, I invited you. Hi, welcome. Thank you for dropping in. Hi, Louisa. There she is. Hi. Hi, beautiful. Hey. Good to see you. How are you? I'm I'm really good. I'm really happy to be here also. And yeah, and it's nice to see you. It's good to see you too. It's been a while since you finished training. Yeah, it's been like, I guess, a year almost. I think mm -hmm. it was last, last April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I realized and one of the reasons why I wanted to showcase all these doulas is that there are so many different types of doulas and a lot of people aren't aware of the, the variety. And they, you know, I just wanted you to share your take, what you bring, your medicine you're walking with, and um, what, to hear what drew you to the work and all the things. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I mean, I was first called to this work probably when I was starting at like age six, um, when my when my mom had my my younger brother, mm -hmm. um, and so she she had a home birth with a midwife. So I was. Um, yeah, I was exposed to birth in the home in that way. Oh, I wasn't okay. actually, yeah, I wasn't actually present for the actual birth, but still, I was, I was there. Um, you were in the energy. Exactly. You felt it, huh? <laughs> yeah. And to just see the way that, yeah, like the midwife would come to our house and all the care was, was happening in the house. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was just... I just remember since that age, just feeling some kind of calling and feeling really connected to that work and, and just the energy of, of birth. Mm -hmm. um, so I always knew that I would uh, explore birth work. I didn't know exactly how it would look, but I knew um, that it was something I would do in this lifetime. Um, yeah. So then that brings me kind of to now. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I a lot of my other work that I do is is within the spiritual realms and within um, ceremony and ritual and um, kind of ancestral work and mm -hmm. um, earth based work. Um, and so I I really see um, being a doula. It's you know it's like a, a spiritual and energetic and emotional support in that way and that can really be applied to kind of like anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be birth. Mm -hmm. So I can see how I, my work could maybe be in general, just as a doula to people's experiences as they're exploring deeper within themselves. Mm -hmm. And then of course, um, of course, I would also like to be working within the birth space that hasn't happened yet. Um, but I'm also trusting in that really unfolding very organically because I want it to be, um, to happen through, like attraction or just that it that it comes naturally and yeah forced, so. yeah I think that for you my my feeling is your practice and, and your business is going to be very similar to mine so I have a lot of ceremony community mm -hmm. who will find me to support them because they know what that's going to look like and what that's going to feel like and they're they want to go deep and they want to really drop into that um expansive space and place and i think you're going to do that too because for, i mean you you have a lot of healing energy and a lot of knowledge and also you have that added element of your music and your voice there's something about singing sometimes these moms get to a certain place and they meet the edge of themselves and they need to be able to move through that block and and singing and music 
absolutely creates an open pathway for them to do do that. And then sometimes, um, you know, you got to you got to sing the baby out. Like there's just, you know, and people just need to know what you're doing, where you are, what you, the space you hold, and they'll come to you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah, because you're powerful. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. you. Tell me, what is some of the things that um, really stood out for you as you began your training and seeing how you would integrate your healing modalities and healing work with your ceremonial work and birth? Like, what was that like? Um, I mean, I remember in the very first session how you were sharing about just when you start to work with people going into the archetypes and that kind of thing right away. Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciated and resonated with, um, with like before even getting into the actual, the pregnancy and the birth and like the, the technicalities, like really getting into the energetics and the relational dynamics, which then goes into the traumas and all of that other information, which is, you know, ancestral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that felt, yeah, something that really stuck with me also is how, um, just how have you spoken about, um, you know, the more addressing of that a- ancestral things, trauma, familial patterning and whatever, um, the more that can get taken care of before the birth, like that is kind of one of the greatest ways to avoid complications in mm-hmm. the actual labor and birth. And that really stuck with me. I think that works in in life for all different types of birth, not even just babies, but also, um, of course, in that as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Like we've been saying all week, everyone's always birthing something. Yeah. And (laughs) it might not necessarily be a physical being, Mm. but there is still that understanding of trauma or what drives you or releasing the things that um, no longer serve you. And, if you can do that, then you can give birth to something that's that's um, a pure essence that is not informed by the past at all. And that's a beautiful thing. And I've seen, I mean, the reason I bring that into the training is because I've seen it. I've seen what happens when things aren't dealt with. It shows up in labor. It can absolutely derail things. It can shut it down until it's resolved and then... You know, it's it's really um, energy is so interesting and so powerful. And if you understand that, and then you understand the the dynamic of birth and healing, yeah, you're gonna be busy. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be busy, my love. Definitely. Um, what do you think would possibly be something that would be um, a challenge for you in regards to this work because you know it's not it's not for everybody right and you do have to take care of yourself i think that i found the most difficult thing was when i started was putting a price on what i'm doing right (laughs) um that was really challenging and then I, i forget who it was it was one of my teachers one of my it was either Maina or Donna Cece it was somebody who said to me if you're not there if you're not well in your mind well in your spirit well in your heart you cannot show up well for anybody in community so if you're struggling financially and your self-worth is all you know she gave me all this information it was very challenging to deal with because you know all the things that I have been trained in are all the things that you're supposedly not supposed to charge for, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So I had a very hard time with that, but then I realized it was the experience that I was and the value that I was bringing to what I was doing that was what I could charge. That allowed me to be really compassionate and to allow people to meet me where they are. Because the people who I'm supposed to support, I'm going to support. I don't care if it's $200 or if it's $25,000, you know, that it's going to be the same quality of work. And I realized that that didn't really matter. And once I just put that intention out that I would always be taken care of, I was the universe's daughter, that I am blessed and I'm following uh, my intuition around this, then I started being supported. 
taken care of. Like all my needs were met. Do you have any of those concerns? Do you think that's going to be a challenge for you? Um, I think I've already been working on this whole thing with all my <laughs> other work. <laughs> I, and so I've already been experiencing what it's like to maybe be offering my work, but not having it be completely reciprocal and like the struggle in that. So I'm really making an effort to move away from that and like hold firm in into what I do need so that I can feel fully good to show up. Um, and then hopefully when there's enough of that being met, then it does allow for other space to meet others in a different range mm -hmm. if they need that. Um so I would like to think that that won't be a struggle because I'm already working that out. You're already doing it. Do. <laughs> you are, you um, are very wise because I didn't have that concept when I started off and I was uh -huh. very much by myself. So I uh -huh. love that you've already been working on it and supported by your teachers and community and everything. Yeah. I mean, and I think, I think for me, because I, I tend to, um, over the years, I, I, go out of the country a lot like my life has a lot of movement so mm -hmm. also I think that will help because if I'm with someone on their pregnancy journey and birth journey me needing to be in one place and be committed that me like that is that's a big one for me so I for sure need to make sure <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that 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 like to commit to that grounding is um definitely yeah like worth it in an equal exchange so um, yeah you can also, you know, be a traveling doula. That happens all the time. Mm -hmm. People have flown me out to support a birth, you know, like I've gone the last month and been there and supported okay. them. Or you could do like some of the traveling midwives do, say, I'm going to be six months here. I'm available for birth. I'm available for sound healing. I'm available for all the things. And then I will be in such and such a place for the next six months and I'm available for this. You know, you can actually put it out there and let people know where you are and what's available to them. I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be just as successful as everybody else is with that. <laughs> and still yeah. maintain your nomad life, you know, yeah. I know that's important to you. And I understand, you know, the deepening of your, your work around that. It's yeah. good. That's it's a, really good. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you did you feel approved? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You make your you make your decision, but it's really about following the truth of who you are and knowing that who you are is someone who has a very deep committed relationship with your spiritual growth and that means that you are going to have to leave. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to do that. It's important to you. It's going to inform your work. So, yeah. you know, don't judge it. Just honor it. Follow it. And then you can just communicate to people what your availability is. And who knows, when you go do your work in whatever country you're in, you might end up supporting somebody there. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think about that? <laughs> yep. Yeah. That would, mm -hmm. that would be really beautiful. It yeah. would be. Yeah. I think you would um, get a lot from that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you another thing. How have you grown in an understanding of yourself and in the understanding of the body that you inhabit. How have you grown learning this work, doing this work, doing your healing work? I mean, you are steeped in a spirit. I mean, that your whole life is a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. You know, like I always say, my life is a meditation and every now and then I drop out of it. Yeah. For when I look at you, your whole life is a spiritual experience and how 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 does it feel how has it grown you mm -hmm. um yeah i've really i think naturally i have a lot of masculine energy and um, mm. as a child i think i was more embodied in that aspect of myself which mm -hmm. may surprise people because there's a way of like seeing me but like I, i'm totally I have surprised lots. and i know you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Well, you also know me since I've like had to really make that conscious shift to really move into that feminine, that more receptive energy. And, um, and I think my, I mean, being a moon dancer has been like the number one um, mm -hmm. way, shift for me in terms of embracing really becoming a woman during that time. I began dancing when I was 21. So at that time it was like 
me becoming a woman, having these teachings, connecting with the moon, connecting mm -hmm. with my womb. But it really took some years to even understand. And I think, um, yeah, so over these years, I've really leaned into that and gone into that. And But that's something I have to actually make an, an effort to do. So even mm -hmm. with like self care and um yeah i don't know to do is is a little easier for me than to be or to receive mm -hmm. and so um i i have to make an effort to do that like for me now it's easy but there was a time maybe two years ago it was hard for me to even just take a bath i was just it was too like i, I just wouldn't do that naturally um mm. and so like just things like that like these self-care things where you just be and receive and i you know really, really relate the element of water with with femininity and to just be in that water and to nourish myself and then to listen to my womb more um yeah it's been it's been a, a journey and so yeah now you know like every time that i'm on my moon it's like if I can really block off that time and do nothing and just really be internal and just nourish myself. Um, like that's what I try to do each month. And uh, yeah. And realizing if I want to step into this work and supporting others that I need to have that direct relationship first with myself so that I can be speaking and guiding from a really authentic place of, of myself also knowing what it is to be in tune with my body and with my womb. So it's been, it's been a journey and I lean very heavily into the feminine energy in these times, but it's also because I feel that that's not my natural, where I naturally am without trying. So just finding mm. that out. You know, the whole idea of masculine and feminine is very interesting to me and the qualities that are placed upon each. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I just always think of, I just when I think about it, I'm always trying to achieve that balance within myself, you know, just to be balanced. <laughs> like to, I don't want one more than the other, but I, I would yeah. love a balance so I, it can support what I need to do in my life and how I, you know, move through it. But it's mm -hmm. very, it's a very interesting journey. And, you know, there's a whole conversation about it these days where it wasn't as prevalent like that when I was younger. Yeah. And, the, so the the understanding around it and how it's coming into the birth space um, is is really interesting um, mm -hmm. because it it's challenging for some people, mm -hmm. you know. And I I get a lot of um, people who are really clear about the idea of of having a non-gender, non-binary type of experience in birth. And if they say those things to people who don't have an understanding of it in mm -hmm. the birth space, um, it can get really confrontational and weird, you know? Um, so there's, and, and usually it's coming from a, not a, a having clarity with their own journey. So I, I really think, that that's one of the reasons why we dive into all that first. We go into yeah. the gender thing. We go into the archetypes. We go in, you know, all of that sexuality, the the idea of birth being more physiological than mm -hmm. all about, you know, the timeline, the numbers, the graphs, the percentages, yeah. all of that. I think that in this day and age, we can have a powerful effect on how people hold that energy in birth. And it's interesting to me that this was your journey. And and like you said, nobody, people can be surprised that this was an issue for you. But I think it's an issue for a lot of women mm. that they're, they're, up, they're out there making it happen. So they feel like they're more in their masculine. But is it true they're more in the masculine? They might just be feeling like they're more than masculine, you know, who knows, but it's a conversation that I would love for people to explore because then it just allows them to uh, move about these birth spaces in a clearer way, you know. Yeah. I think that we can, because the, the bullying and the judgment in the birth space is really, really hard. It's hard to witness. I'm sure it's hard to feel, mm -hmm. you know.
Ugh. What do you think about what would you do? Let, let's let's have a scenario. If you had somebody who was not really connected to her body, this is something that we have a lot of too. Mm -hmm. That there's a disconnect of their body, or there's some type of um, restricting in their diet in their food. I mean, I'm in Los Angeles, so this happens a lot. How would you support a mom who is maybe being in touch with their body for the first time in a real big way, or somebody who is so caught up in the idea of being young and beautiful and a perfect body? I mean, I'm in like Los Angeles yeah. this weekend, you know, really in my face about people and their, and their appearance. What do you think is a necessary conversation or how would you support them connecting with their body and, con and realizing that food is nourishment and not necessarily something that's out to hurt them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of this stems from the forgotten initiations and rites of passages of this process. And um, if we can like reach into... Um, yeah, just like go, going back and really looking at these pivotal moments in um, someone's someone's life and the the initiation that's happening, um, mm -hmm. which can support like all the other levels. So it's not just this physical change or something of like gaining weight or something. Right. Um, and really come into even the archetypes. Like if it's if it's a a woman, a mother, like really talking with her about um, this maiden to mother archetype and that like you're not meant to be a maiden with the baby you're not meant you're not going to be who you are now as a maiden now with your child you're going to be a mm -hmm. mother which means that there's a complete transformation and through that there can be conversation around uh you know nourishment and how this and, and the eating and the food and how that is um, a part of creating it's a necessary tool really for creating that transformation into this new being that is the mother mm -hmm. um and you know I, I really want to work with different kind of ritual uh practices to really show and really have that person feel a real ceremonial experience where they can then have permission to be like now i'm a new person so yes i birthed myself exactly to like then symbolize that transformation which can give them more permission to be mm -hmm. in it because they know that they transformed so they don't exactly Exactly. That, and that's one of the reasons why we started with that. Because if you start with the, the archetypes and you start with the understanding that, you know, when you're working with your clients, I mean, literally, I lead, I lead with this. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, so, you know, you can't be a, a girl yeah. having a baby in the birth space. So we're, we're in your evolution. We're going to see where you are. And I need to get you to the mother before you go into labor. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's that process and understanding of, okay, I'm, I'm saying goodbye to this. And, and they always feel very, um, it's interesting. They're like, I don't want to say goodbye to the maiden. She has so much for fun. And she's, you know, and it's true. Right. But what they don't realize is that the maiden, the young girl, the woman all come back in the growth of your child. So you can play with your child then you can be mischievous with your child when you reach that age. Um, you know, you, you still get to do all those things, except that in labor, a child having a child, and energetically, it's just gonna, it's gonna stop it. It's, yeah. Things are gonna come up, which is also why we have to deal with trauma, why we have to deal with any type of abuse, anything like that, mm -hmm. so that it's healed or it's understood before the labor begins. And it's interesting because when we do that and they, they realize they stepped into the divine mother in a beautiful way and completely. I love watching the partners too. If it's same sex or if it's male, whatever, they all still have this arc and this growth. A lot of times the struggle for if they're men in the space is that they have a good time being the boy and the young man uh -huh. and dropping into the father means something to them. It means something a little different. And so if we can have conversations around that to open it up for them as a possibility of being the father that they desire to be, mm -hmm. not what TV tells them or not what their father did or, you know, their groups of friends tell, I mean, literally these people are birthing themselves into being the parents they want to be. 
-hmm. you know, and if they understand the ritual around that, they can have a beautiful birth ceremony and yeah. birth the child at the same time. It's like glory. Yeah. <laughs> I love that that's um, an energy that you are loving and willing to hold. I think mm -hmm. you'll do it really well. Thank Just you. knowing you. Wow. Um, is there anything that you wanted to drop into that wasn't gone over in class? I mean, I know that when I started with sexuality, people are like, whoa, that's how you start with your clients? I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> birth is a sexual event. And yes. if we can't ask for our needs sexually with our partners, how are we going to show up in this labor place, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember everybody kind of going, whoa. <laughs> And then I remember everyone um, doing, like, wondering why we were doing the archetypes and how mm -hmm. it played out. But then you seeing how it plays out um, in our life consciously and unconsciously, right? And it runs a birth. Then we did the business part of this whole thing. So we went through the mechanics. We went through the energetics. Then we went through the business part. Is there anything else that you would have liked to have dropped into um, for your own knowledge and skills that I, perhaps I didn't cover? Um, I mean, I think you covered this, but I think the area that I feel the least confident in, and it's Ooh. also because I have my own issues with it, is all Ooh, the, like, the, medical, <laughs> the medical stuff. Um, and yeah, I don't feel that I have like this full medical understanding, like this term, this term, oh, this and that because I really want to do this work from this like primal intuitive, we were made for this. This is natural. This is not a medical experience. Like mm -hmm. what? Not a pathology, right? There's no disease. Yeah. It's a pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it sounds like to me that mm -hmm. you would like to support people following and honoring the ancient birth map. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> And there are people who are totally going to want that, mm -hmm. you know, who don't want that, that modern birth experience, that modern birth map. They don't want to be hooked up. They don't want to be laying down. They don't want to be tied to things. They want to mm -hmm. be humanized. You're yeah. going to, so you're going to really find those people. You are going to be so busy when you decide to just start. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> Girlfriend. I, I know. What are we waiting for? Okay. This is I, your, I your mentor that. showing up here. What are we doing? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't Are know. Are you scared? I'm, I think I like was waiting for like them to come to me and not me to put it out. But I know I could partially put it out. I, I don't really know. No, you could completely put it out. <laughs> uh -huh. Be really open to the possibility of supporting people. You're uh -huh. ready. You are so ready. You've been doing it. Mm -hmm. For years, you've been doing it. It's just now you have, you have a piece of paper saying, I am that, but you were already doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's, I know it feels big because it's intimate, right? Yeah. But if you remember that it's not about you, it's an egoless field, you're showing up to provide support for their vision of their birth. Then you can show up and just be. If you have expectations of you have to hold it, you have to create it, you, it's not, you know, you don't. It's not your thing. It's not, it's nothing about us. Mm -hmm. They have the freedom. I just, I really feel that you represent a untapped group of, of community that feel like they don't have a place to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there you are. Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're powerful. I really want you to own your medicine because I've, I've, I've seen you go through things. I've watched how you navigate the space. I've watched you hold space for people. I've seen how you've healed yourself and you've supported healing in community. Girlfriend, don't get caught up and trapped by this ego thing because that's not real, right? It's not, it's, not, it's not who you are. So you wouldn't all of a sudden be that thing. Just continue to love community and show up for it and it'll happen that's why I, that's why i reached out to you to do this live 
Because I was uh -huh. like, she has been hiding. It's, she's been done for all this time. She's done. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> and then when I went out and sent the text to you, I was like, oh, she's not replying right away. <laughs> oh, she's scared. She's scared. Um, see, people are, are really, look, girl, are you reading this? We yeah, definitely I, I need you in the verse ASAP, she says. So I, I want you to listen to your community because these are your, these are your people talking to you. There is a need that is important to be filled, and there is a labor shortage of doulas, and especially doulas who can support a specific community mm -hmm. of people. I see that you would be um, advantageous. I mean, I yeah. So I'm just gonna make it happen because I'm gonna put you all on my little <laughs> website as you know a doula, a healer, sound healer, all the ways that you can support community. Uh, you just need to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank um, you. <laughs> this is yeah. This is really nice. Thank you. Sometimes everybody. class has to continue. <laughs> sometimes it has to continue. I just I want you to see yourself because we see you. And we want to call you forth and be in, to be in your power. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for the feeling that you're ready, you're never going to be ready because it's never like a great time. There's always mm -hmm. something else to do or another class to take or some place to visit. Some point you've got to step into your purpose and then just go. Because if yeah. you show up and you do your thing, somebody's going to see you Somebody's going to hear you. Somebody's going to feel you and create a possibility and an opening for themselves, too. Oh, Carolina. Hello, sweetheart. I've been definitely experiencing the same. Oh, ooh, see? See? Look at you. Oh, my look God. At, look at all this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, y'all give it to her because I she ain't listening to me. <laughs> give it to her. See all that love you're getting? Look at all this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. How does that make you feel? I, it feels really good. I've been in a really, you know, I'm like peak Saturn return right now. I've been in an interesting place with my, just my work and how I'm serving. And so this is, thank you, everyone. This is really, it feels really good, really supportive. And yeah, thank you because this is helping initiate some energy to put towards all of this. So I Yeah, you don't want to squat in it like a toad. You got to jump. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta jump sis you uh -huh. gotta jump you know cause you could sit there waiting the whole time like oh not yet okay oh oh uh -huh. and then years have gone by and missed opportunities it's kind of like I know you've heard me say that when inspiration hits or you get an idea or you get a feeling or something's being uh, created in you and then you ignore it and you have mm -hmm. a, a creative abortion? Mm hmm I didn't let you do that. <laughs> you, you went through a lot to be in the training. A lot. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> and you moved twice. You, there was so much that had to fall away from your life and shed and to en enable you to show up for this that I really want you to gift yourself and your community with that knowledge and that information and that energy because you were determined. Mm -hmm. You were determined. You never missed it. And even though you were going through such a huge rebirth, mm -hmm. you still showed up. You, you showed up fully and completely. You might have been in tears, but you were in the space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, see, she's talking to you. Do you see the chat? Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Carolina, she's such a sender, sweetie. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I okay. feel more ready than I ever did now. <laughs> you guys did it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I have your bio. I have your mm -hmm. info. It's going up on the website. 
you can always decline if you know if something's because it's also about what we feel we are capable of holding we don't want to do something when we can't show up completely in an integrity right so you have the the control to say yes or no but let's put you out there i want you to sleep on it i want you to meditate on it i want you to ask about it i won't just put you up without your okay Mm -hmm. But I want you to really look at this thing, this idea that's holding you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I will definitely, yeah, reflect. Okay. Because this happens in birth. We have women who aren't quite, quite ready to walk that labyrinth. And you're going to have to say, Mama, what's holding you back? What's in the way? And you're going to have to help her release that and shift it and reframe the whole experience so that she can begin the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So this is your home play for you to understand in yourself so that you can support them through it. Mm -hmm. Everything that we go through personally is for us to show up better for our clients. Yeah. I really believe that. So this is this is your experience. This is happening for a reason. You'll you'll go, take a deep dive into it, and then you'll be able to support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh gosh, our time is almost up. Jeez, I feel like we just started. So why don't you share with the world what you're up to? What, tell them about your music, where they can find it. If you're doing any more sound healings or any classes, like just tell people what you're up to and how they can find you. All right. Um, yeah, this is a really rich time. I'm in the middle of, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things. But something I've been doing over the last year, um, I have a one-to-one -one mentorship program. All of my work stems from uh, working with the different wheels um, throughout cultures. I like to really tap into my own ancestry. Um, so I work with the medicine wheel. I work with the wheel of the year. And um, all of my work is rooted in the four directions and the eight holy days and the seasons, the moon cycles, all of that. And so I have a mentorship program, which is for six months. And it's kind of like half a school of like really learning these teachings and receiving information and practices. And then the other half is just that really personal guidance into how to anchor these systems into that individual's life and, and then also utilize them to create the shifts and changes. Um, so that is a program I have. It's running. Enrollment is open. I also have like a discovery call that's free for anyone interested. Um, I have a, I actually have a, a sacred conception program. I've taken a couple through. It's a four part program. You tripping. <laughs> yeah it's a four-part program it's like it's working on even before the pregnancy just working with the person who wants to conceive and then working with the couple there are like journaling and just different things to bring in the ritual to that aspect so I also have that <laughs> honey I adore you so much you're just oh. sitting on so much power and so much information <laughs> that these families need I love it but now you're telling on yourself so continue <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. And then um, as for Where can music, I find your music? Yeah. Yes, music. Um, so right now I actually only have one song that's released. It's on SoundCloud. The link is in my Instagram bio. Um, but I'm in the process. I have been for over a year now of recording a full length album, 11 of my original songs. It's a huge, huge project. I have elders and teachers on the album. Um, really good friends on the album and uh, yeah I'm actually going to be launching a crowdfund um, at the beginning of May which is really bringing the community in because I really need support on the financial side of things um, so that's like a huge thing that there's going to be a lot of musical stuff shared coming up and I'm nice. hoping that the album will be released uh, maybe in September um, oh wow great up. yeah yeah we're like getting we just finished up the instrumentals so now moving to the vocals and have beautiful artwork that's going to be made for it um 
So all the information for my music and my work, my programs and everything, that's, you can, Instagram is a great way to, to follow it all. I do have a website, but the links to everything are in my, my Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you say your name? Is it Enoa? I hope I'm saying it correctly. Enoa says, put her up, put her up. She's ready. <laughs> so good so good thank you so much my love for coming and and having this open conversation around your work and what you're up to and just celebrating you and your amazing healing medicine mm -hmm. and um, I'm really grateful for you yeah thanks thank for, you. for being here yeah, thank you so much. This has been, I didn't know what we were going to talk about, but this has been so, it's just been so good to connect with you and just hear your, your words and your support and everyone who joined. Thank you. And I mean, I'm grateful. I feel inspired. So yeah, thank you so much. I am always a phone call away, my love. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you for being here and celebrating World Doula Week with us. Yes. Have All a beautiful right. week, love. Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs>